Hello there. Another roster breakdown video. Today we're going to be talking about the Solar Scarabs. Um, surprising roster, I think, for, for most people. You've got Solar Troll in the solo lane, so hopefully not trolling in the jungle. Layers in the mid lane. Ooh, Baronic in the support role inbound. ADC is Zapman and Slaney going to be filling out the roster in the coach role. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting composition of players, not not a group of players and, and a coach that you'd have put together. I don't think I don't think anybody could have guessed that this roster would end up being a reality um, in the off season, unless you had some kind of insider knowledge. Um, but it's it's just it just seems so strange that it's come together. Zatman wins two world championships in a row um, and ends up on what you have to say is a roster that most people would consider one of one of the weaker rosters. I mean, Baronic and Lair is coming in from, well, Baronic played in the SCC for, I think he played for some of last season. I'm not sure if it was the entirety of last season. Um, him and Lair is coming in. Lair is obviously having a good showing. In the SCC in the jungle, Solar Troll removed um, from that Renegades roster for um, personality issues, I guess you could say, for, for being a bad teammate, essentially, seems to be the way it came out. <clears throat> Inbounds coming off of an eighth place finish on Obey, and then you've got Zatman, who's won Worlds two years in a row, and Slaney, who's had two second place finishes in Worlds in a row. With team rival um i guess let's first of all i mean i guess i'll just work work my way from solo down we'll talk about solo wear troll first um i think this goes for solo and this goes for all of the players on this team they have something to prove for sure um when you're on a roster like this and people and with solo having been removed from an, uh, the renegades roster which then went on to do you know, pretty good things um, without him. He, he'll definitely feel like that's something that reflects poorly on him and people from the community will will talk about it and will, will, will push that narrative to him and he has to kind of refute it and prove that he's good enough and prove um, that they the Renegades were wrong to get rid of him. And, and this is a good roster for him to try that with. Um, I think personality-wise... I hope he's learned this lesson. Um, if there was an issue with the Renegades and the way that he acted, I hope he's learned this lesson and we don't see any repeats. Um, I think he'll get a lot of space and a lot of opportunities to shine with this squad. I think inbound and layers and even Zap to an extent will will give other people space to play and, and, and give them opportunities to shine. And I think Salt needs to grab that and prove that, uh, that he deserves to be here and that he has the potential to be a top solo laner. I definitely think that's true. I think mechanically he's very good and he's he innovates, I think, and he you know he he has pop off potential. Um, so I definitely want to see him come out swinging this season. I want to see him grinding the game again, um, streaming a lot and and such like and hitting the ranked queues and just making other people scared of him, building up his own ego. I think something that's really important as a solo laner is having that um, swagger, that self-confidence. Um, and, and I think solo solo definitely has it. Um, but I think, you know, push it, push it even further. Tell everyone else they suck. I want to see Salt dominating. Uh, layers in the jungle. Um, coming off of a pretty good season, I thought Lairs was was pretty good in the jungle towards the end of last season. Um, in the SPL qualifiers for for SEC teams, he was great in the jungle. Him playing around wolves uh, was fantastic for his team. I thought that whole um, oh god, what were they called? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look it up. They were wait, hang on. Before I look it up, I'm not looking. I swear, I don't, I don't have the page open yet. They were called Mind the Gap. I want to say Mind the Gap. Yeah, Mind the Gap, which was Wolves, Lairs, Crimson, Griff, and Quig. Um, I think 
four of the players on that team. I thought Quake was a little bit disappointing, but Lairs, Crimson, Griff, and, and Wolves were all fantastic last year, and I would have liked to see any of them, and all of them, um, get into the SPL. Obviously, it's only Lairs in the end. Um, it was, I think Crimson was obviously intended to be on this roster. Um, I don't know if everybody knows about this, but basically Crimson tweeted saying, had an SPL spot, um, but ended up unable to take it because he would have lost his scholarship for college. So if he if he paused it or, or left or whatever. So he had to keep studying. He wasn't able to move. And so he wasn't able to join. And that's where Baronic came in. Uh, Baronic previously of a few rosters. Um, he was he was obviously on the 20, was it 2020 Worlds they won um, with, with layers. It was Hype Unit Console. Uh, Baronic joined that, um, and I think he he won. Um, I think he won worlds in the final the final console worlds. I would I want to say, um, and then he was on hype unit in the NASCC for a while. And um, where did he go from there? Let me look. I think he was he was on a team called Hands Off the Merchandise towards the end of. Um, of last season playing with my sweet potato Zaxi, Vixium, and Y Waddle team that actually well Waddle and Sweet Potato and I think Zaxi as well they were they were on team that actually um, beat Weekend and Co in in week one of uh, SEC quali- qualifiers for for this year I think so uh, yeah it was it, it Baronic's a, a strange one he's not a name that I expected to see in the SPL this year. Um, obviously a capable mid laner. He's done it at the highest level before. He's competed in the SCC and, and done well. They won um, They won the open circuit phase one and qualified, I think, uh, into the SCC. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a good player, Bronick, but I think, uh, well, I think Crimson is a better player, to be honest. Um, from what I've seen of the of the two, Crimson I think was the 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 one who impressed me more, and I think Baronic has a lot to prove again, coming into this team and coming into the SPL, being probably the, one of the most unknown players coming in. Um, I would say he's probably the maybe the most unknown. I don't know. I guess maybe I have that EU bias uh, around people like Johnny and Julio. Maybe they're more unknown or Haddix even. Um, but Baronic definitely not someone who who would have been expected to come in. But this console core of layers, Baronic didn't inbound. Um, I guess they would have come as a trio and and built this team up. Inbound, next up last year, um, I think him and Wowie started very poorly in the SPL last year with Obey. I do think they grew into it a bit. Um, inbound when he had a bit more direction, I think with um. With Sino, he played better. Um, I want to see him, you know, keep growing inbound. I think he seems to me very driven and very passionate about the game from the outside. You see the way he tweets and the way he he is on stream. He's also, I think, he strikes me as a very good teammate just because of his general attitude and his sort of positivity. He seems like he would he would be a good one to be around, even if you're losing. Um, I think he's not going to get down on you and get down on himself. He's going to keep pushing you guys on, which I think is a good a good asset to have. I think support wise, there there aren't many options in the support role to be honest um, that you could have gone with instead of inbound. I think there's you know you couldn't really. Um, he he was always going to get a spot in the league. I felt like just because you know he played pretty well last year, especially towards the end and. Uh, there's just a lack of supports in general, um, but I, you know, I'm interested to see how this dual lane goes. Zatman and, and inbound, not a not a dual lane that a lot of people would have predicted, I guess. Again, um, but a dual lane with something to prove. Zatman ending up on the squad. He made a tweet, uh, basically saying he was on another roster and was kicked off at the last minute, or kicked off overnight. I think was the way it was phrased. Is I, I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, I do know, but I can't. I can't talk about it, I guess. I don't want to... With these roster things, like, I don't want to step on people's toes and, and talk about what happened and have people witch hunting and stuff like that. It's just, it's not fair. Um, if players want to talk about it, they can. I'm not going to... 
I'm not going to spill the beans on this kind of stuff, sadly. I know you would all love me to, but yeah, I got to, I got to, I got to keep the, I got to keep the healthy relationship with the pros. Otherwise <laughs> I won't be able to do any content. Um, but Zap was on another roster, basically tweeted saying he was, he seemed pissed that he had been removed from another roster overnight and landed in this one. Um, and he seemed like he's coming out with something to prove this guy. He's won worlds two years in a row, Zap man. Um, I've already seen comments being like Zap got carried. Zap, I, I, it's nonsense. It's not true. Zap was was good for PK. He did what he had to do. He made a few mistakes. Don't get me wrong. And he probably wasn't as good as someone like Paul, but he did not get carried. It's not how games at this level work. You've got to pull your weight. If you if you if you have one player not pulling your weight, you're gonna you're gonna lose. Um, and Slaney, coming off of rival into this team, he's been on sort of a favorite team for the last two years. I mean, he came, he, he was on teams like CLG and uh, he was on Enix before and Noble and Wowie and the Airs. God, what a roster that one was. <laughs> uh, but those are his previous rosters. And uh, I feel like Slaney maybe ending up on this team means he has something to prove as well. It seems like he's lost his spot with the, the rival boys to, to Kabom. And none of the other teams have valued him highly enough to, to pick him up. Maybe this is the team that he chose to go with, but it does seem to me like a sort of leftovers team. This was the, the console boys and, and, and they got their pick of, of what was left, kind of, is the way I look at it. Um, maybe I'm just totally wrong on that. But uh, Slaney ending up on this one. I'm glad he's going to stay around coaching. He's been around for a while. He seems like he works hard at it and he cares but again, like, what the fuck do I know? Coaches, it, it's if you're claiming to to have insight on what a coach does from outside of a team, you're you're lying unless you've got some kind of personal insight from one of the players because it's 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 impossible to tell. Different coaches have different roles; they're doing different things. The players, um, you know, they could be they could be you could have the perfect coach, and if if the players aren't listening. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work. So, and you could have a coach who does nothing, and if the players are outstanding and doing all the right things, then the coach is gonna look great, or the team is gonna look great, and the coach might look good. Good um, as a result of that. But you know, yeah, I can't say much about coaches. I can just say kind of what I see from the outside looking in. Anyway, this team, Solar Scarabs, bad team name. It does have to be said. Is it? Is it the worst team name? I think it's a weak one. They got there be meme in the bug stuff, which I think is all right. But yeah, for me right now, this team has a lot to prove. I think they do strike me as a team who could come in and, and prove everyone wrong. They are that those kinds of players. I think driven. They've got that winners mentality. Um, you know, they've all won things before, apart from salt, basically. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to see them play. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I say this every time. Again, I think I said it in the last video as well. I'm excited to see every team play. But uh, I think this team has something to prove. Zap and inbound in the dual lane. Want to see how that goes. I think inbound, still learning. He's still relatively fresh in the, the SVL compared to Zap, at least. So uh, we'll see if Zap can teach him some new tricks. Or maybe inbound can teach Zap some new tricks. And these guys can become a dominant dual lane. Saw a lot to prove. Baronic a lot to prove. I think he's been tweeting about it, basically saying, no one expects much of me, and I'm here to, to prove people wrong. Maybe I made that up, but I'm pretty sure I read something along those lines. And, and Layers has definitely been grinding the game. So, yeah, that's going to be it for me. That's another one. Uh, like, subscribe. Don't hit the bell. Uh, and I'll, I'll see you next time. Bye.